Gamer Subs is a sugar-free, great-tasting energy formula for gamers and workaholics alike. We here at the Toasty Bros love the energy it provides while tasting great. Want to give it a shot? Get a free trial by using the link down below and use code Toasty Bros on your next full order for 10% off. Hey, how's it going guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros and I'm here to bring you a GPU throwback video. Today, we are going to be checking out the AMD Radeon 7770GHz Edition, a GPU that a few years ago was actually one of the best bang for the buck video cards on the market. But how does it perform today in most modern titles? Well, let's talk about that. So a few days ago, I went out on eBay and picked up one of these cards for $40. Definitely not the best value for money at all, and I would not recommend you doing so. But the only reason I purchased it was really to make this video, and because this graphics card has been in Jackson's rig a long time, and I kind of wanted to pay it tribute. The Radeon 7770GHz Edition comes with a single gigabyte of VRAM, a core clock of 1000MHz, and a memory clock of 1125MHz. Notice my huge emphasis on the single gigabyte of VRAM because in 2017, VRAM has become very valuable in gaming with the amount of textures that is required even at 1080p, and that is going to be the resolution that we're testing this card at today, so hopefully it doesn't cry itself to death. In reality, this question has two duties to it. We're going to be testing this to see if this card is viable in 2017 in popular titles, and also give one gigabyte of VRAM a shot and see if it actually can perform in 2017. My gut feelings say no, but yeah, that's what benchmarks are for, so how do we just jump into those? The test bench I'm going to be using is featuring an i7-5820K at 3.8 GHz and 16 GB of DDR4 RAM to try to eliminate as many system bottlenecks as possible. So without any further ado, let's talk about those benchmarks. First game we are going to be testing is Counter-Strike Global Offensive because this game represents a game that this card actually would have worked really well on back when it was relevant. And with the game at max settings, you can see it hovers around 115 FPS most of the time, with some slight dips below 100 every so often. There are no really any major hiccups that are noticeable at 1080p, and the GPU is doing a lot of the work, showing that it's being pinned at 99% usage most of the time. And I do really consider CSGO very playable on max details with this card, which really isn't a surprise to anybody. Next up, we're going to step up the graphics with Doom on OpenGL mode with low settings, where we see a total different story with a more modern game. This card struggles to get over 20 FPS in this game at 1080p. The older architecture and low frame buffer really hinders this card from making it the obvious bottleneck. You really can drop this game down to 720p if you want better results, but at 1080p, this card is not looking really good and I see more of this to come. Next up is Killing Floor 2 at 1080p medium settings, which was actually a decent surprise. While the game is not really that hard to run, it is still a very visually appealing game with a lot of action on the screen. In this game, we do stay well within playable frame rates with some slight dips that do cause an annoyance playing, but overall staying within a 58 to 60 FPS average, which is a great gaming experience for this little card. Now onto the most popular FPS game on Steam right now, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. On very low settings, this graphics card manages to keep around 30 FPS most of the time. While 30 FPS is acceptable in some games, PUBG is not one of them, being how fast paced the game is. While it is playable, I would not say it's acceptable for someone who wants to be good at the game and its very competitive fast paced nature. Lastly, I wanted to test Rocket League because it represents another eSport title that could be the selling point of this card regardless of its 1GB of VRAM. And yes, if you drop the settings to performance settings and you play at 1080p, you get a very playable result that's constantly over 60fps. This card has no issues with titles like CSGO and Rocket League, and I could safely say you would see the same results with games like Dota and League, so this is a good esports card, but overall, what are my conclusions of it? Really, should you buy this card? Well, first off, it's definitely not worth the $40 used price tag that I paid. No way, no how. I bought this just to make a video and I highly don't recommend it at that price tag. Maybe if you come across it for $20, I would say it'd be a good value. You can make a pretty decent medium to high settings esports gaming build on a sub $100 budget using this card, but that's a big maybe. But you should definitely expect nothing more from this card because you will be very disappointed to see how much it's hindered with its VRAM buffer at 1080p in modern titles. 
720p is an option with this card if you still happen to have it, but I never recommend anyone buying a card to go play at 720p. It is not worth it nowadays when you can easily save up a little bit more and be a little bit more patient and get something used like a 660 Ti or 670 that will give you an extra gig of VRAM and much, much better performance at 1080p. So my overall conclusions on this card, is it a good card in 2017? I am afraid not. It's best that you probably save your money and put it elsewhere. That about wraps things up here, guys. If you like this video, leave a like down below and comment what you think. If you haven't already, subscribe for more content from the Toasty Bros, and I will see you on the next one, guys. Peace out.